Hi, this is Eugene Blanchard from TelecomWorld101.com and uh, today what we're going to talk about is a simple and easy graphical method to do subnetting. Um, before we go on any further, what I just wanted to mention that this is uh, video is copyrighted. Uh, you're not allowed to copy it, edit it, distribute it, uh, put it up on your website. Uh, you're definitely not allowed to state that it's your that you created or your property. That's just wrong. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with a simple network uh, and this network what we have is a video net that has five hosts connected up with a wide area network that needs two hosts, two office net that has 12 hosts, to a wireless net that has 21 hosts. So this is the network that we're going to start with. So what we'll do is uh, we're going to use subnet 192.168.100.0 slash 24. That's going to be our starting class C network and we're going to subnet it. Um, we're going to use something called the basic numbers chart. Basic numbers chart indicates uh, the bit position. So starting with bit position 0 to 7. 0 to 7 indicates the first quadrant of the IP address. So in our network we're going to borrow bits from this position. The 8 here and this refers to the first 24 bits. Right? So the first 24 bits indicate the network address. Right? So if we look at our subnet mask, or actually it's a network mask for class C, we see it says 255, 255, 255.0. Each one of these numbers, 255, represents um, 8 bits. And to get 255, you have to have 1111, space 1111. Um, what I like to do is I like to re represent bits uh, using nibbles. It's just easier to see. So there's 8 bits here, all 1s, representing 255. Now, if we look at this, there's 8 bits here, another 8 there, that's 16, another 8 there is 24. So this is where the slash 24 prefix comes from. It says that the first, we're going to use starting at here, the first 24 bits are going to represent the network number. So I'll just get rid of that. Now, what we're going to do is these bits, 0 to 7, they represent the um, the the host address, right? So the zero here indicates the host portion. We're going to borrow bits from in the zero to seven range. We're going to start borrowing them from seven in this order to six to five to four. And what we're going to do is use these as part of our network address. And that's what subnetting is all about. Bing, 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 bing. Um, some of the things this shows is the number of hosts. We say two to the n. Uh, with the bit position indicates the number of hosts that are allowed on this network and we start 1, uh, 2 to the 0 is 1, 2 to the 1 is 2 and what you can see is that it really doubles every time 1 doubled is 2 to 4 to 8 to 16 to 3. I'm not going to go in, in depth too much on how this basic numbers chart is met is made. If you go to www.telecomworld101.com what you'll see is that uh, I go into quite a uh, explanation on how it's done. Some of the things that happens here is that we have something called usable hosts and hosts. Usable hosts, um, what we do is we subtract two hosts that are not allowed to be used for PCs and devices. Uh, the first host is the subnet address, we're not allowed using that, and the broadcast. If we we have to subtract from the number of hosts, so 1 minus 2 gives us a minus one. You can't have minus one hosts. Two minus two is zero. You, you can't make a network with zero hosts. So we just block off this section here. Uh, if we do here, we say four minus two gives us two. This tells us how many usable hosts on the network. And this is what this column does. Now, over here, this is the prefix for a class C network. And we see that here's the prefix again. Well, if we borrow one bit, that means we're using 25 bits to indicate the network address. So the prefix is slash 25. If we borrow two bits here, seven, bit 7 and bit 6, what we're doing now is we're uh, our, the number of bits representing the network is, is 26. Over here we have the subnet mass. Now what happens is I've taken kind of a shortcut. Um, as you can see here, 
the subnet mask for slash 24 is 255.255.255.0. All I'm doing is representing the last uh, digits here, which is actually called the first quadrant. First quadrant is here. Uh, as example for a slash 25, the subnet mask would be, uh, let me just put here, 255.255.255.128. I'm just representing the last um, or digits here, or what we call the first quadrant. Um, so let's get this cleared off. Uh, so this is going to be a tool that we're, we're going to use. It just makes things easier on when when we try to decide what networks, what prefixes, how many hosts there are, what is the subnet mass. So we have this all drawn out in that. Now this is called a network map and it has a column that says names so we're going to put the names of the uh, networks in here like wireless net is the name we'll put that in the number of hosts that that network needs uh, the prefix that allows us to have a network that will support that number of hosts we'll figure out the network address the host range the broadcast address and the subnet mask now um, what we, we won't do this all in this order what we'll find out is that we'll kind of skip back and forth Okay. So the very first step we want to do is put the networks um, in order, in descending order here of size. So what we find is the network that has the most number of hosts is the wireless network. So wireless net, it has 25 hosts. So then what we do is we check and say office net, it has 12 hosts. That's the next biggest one. So we're just getting ready for... Uh, our variable length subnet masking and what we're going to do is start this chart and we're going to see that it's actually pretty easy to do. Uh, video net is the next largest one it has five hosts uh, the last one is our WAN link it's got two hosts it's just a point-to-point -point connection so we've got this down here now the question is is we have to find a network that will support these hosts so as an example um, which of these networks here are going to support 25 hosts? Well, we come over to our chart and we say the number of usable hosts and we look down and what we see is that uh, 14 is too small, 62 is too large. We want to make an efficient network, use it, make it as efficient as possible. We find that 30 hosts on this network will support 25 and we have 5 extra. The prefix we use is slash 27. So in my chart, what I do is I put slash 27. So a slash 27 network will support 25 hosts with no problem. Now the uh, subnet mass for this is dot 224. So I can fill this out too at the same time. So this is dot 224. It's really not 224. What it should be is 255.255.255.2. .255 Two, two, four. That would be the full one. And what we're doing is just to make the, the chart easier to read and not uh, so much noise going on in there. We're just going to put the last, uh, what we call the first octet, dot two, two, four here. Next, I want to know what prefix or network will support the office net, which needs 12 hosts. So uh, what I'm going to do here is just clean this up. Bang, bang, and kazam. And I look and I say 12, 14. This network can support 14. It's a slash 28. And it uses a subnet mask of 240. So what I can do is enter that in my table. Slash 28. And the last digit is dot 240. And if we wrote it out in full, it would be 255.255.255.240. That would be the subnet mask for a slash 28 network. And what I'll do is get rid of this. Bang. Now what I need to know is a network that will support at least five hosts. So I go back to my basic numbers chart and I take a look at it. And here's a network that will support six hosts. So slash 29 network will support hit six hosts. It has a subnet mask of 255.255.255.248. So I can enter that into my uh, network table here. So let's just do that. So it'll be slash 29 
and it has a network mask of dot two four eight. Let's just double check that. Yep. So what I'll do is I'll just clean this up here. And now we get to the last one. The last one is WAN 1. It needs only two hosts. Uh, we don't need any room for expansion on a, a WAN connection because it's a point-to-point -point connection. So what we find is that we can use this network supports two. It has a prefix of slash 30 and it has a subnet mask of 255.255.252. .255 right if i had a network that was not a point to point and we had two host requirement and we needed room for expansion we'd go with a this network here which supports 6 that would give us four extra hopes but we don't have to cuz it's a wan connection a wan connection is just point to point between two uh devices so what i'll do is i'll put slash 30 here and uh, let's just scroll up a tab and it's 255.255.255.252. So now we've we've come actually a long way. I'm just going to clean this up before I continue on. Get rid of this. Nice and pretty. Oops, another one there. Okay, so now we have our prefixes. Now what we can do is start with our network address. Okay, so we're going to use a chart here. This is the graphical part right here. So here's our chart. We can see it's quite la long, right? And what we have is our prefix here, slash 25, slash 26, slash 27, slash 28, slash 29, slash 30. The numbers in brackets are the weightings for each bit. So let's put the bits down. So this one represents bit 7. This one represents bit 6. This represents bit 5, bit 4, bit 3, bit 2, and bit 1 to bit 0, we don't care about. Why don't we care about it? So where do we get these numbers from? So I'll go back to our basic numbers chart up here. And what we have is our bit position. Here is bit 0 and bit 1. And we ended up that we can't use that. There's no usable host. So we don't care about it. This is bit 2. It has a weighting of 4. Bit 3 has a weighting of 8. Bit 4 has a weighting of 16, 5 of 32, etc. And these are where these numbers come. So here's bit 2 had a weighting of 4. Bit 3 of 8. Bit 4 of 16. Bit 5 of 32. Bit 6 of this. Now right here, this is actually our slash 24 area. Right? So everything from here on is our slash 24. Right? So we have columns with slash 25, 26, 27, 28, 29. This represents our IP address space. And what we're going to do is start reserving it for the different subnets that we're, we're uh, uh, creating. So the very first network is a wireless net. It has a prefix of slash 27. So what we have to do is reserve our address space for slash 27 network. So we come over here and we look at the column that says slash 27 and we go down to the first bit that hasn't been allocated, right? That's this one. So what we're going to do is we're going to block this off. We'll block it all off and everything to the right. What we're doing is reserving this bit for our wireless network, right? So now we've got a map that says, here's our wireless net. Fantastic. Now, what we can do is that we can config, we can figure out our subnet address. Okay, so what we'll have is um, the first, we have to borrow three bits. If we use slash 27, we're borrowing bit 7, bit 6, and bit 5. So what we do is we circle this bit here, 0, it's a 0, it's a 0. So what we find is that our network address for the wireless net is going to be 0, times 28, that's the weighting of that bit, which is 0. 0 times 64, the weighting of bit 6, that's 0, because 0 times tw 0 times 32 is 0, and that's the weighting. So the IP address or the for the subnet is going to be 0 plus 0 plus 0. It's going to be 0. So we can come up to here, and we can figure out, type in our network address as dot 0. Now, I'm taking another shortcut, and what I'm not showing is 
this first part, 192.168.100, right? All I'm going to do is write the last one, and this is the, 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 the first quadrant right here is the area that we are going to borrow bits, and that's the one we're concerned with. So when I write it down, this is actually saying 192.168.100.0 with a prefix of slash 27. Okay, so the next one for office net, we need a prefix of slash 28. So what we're going to do is we're going to come to our graphical chart. We're going to the column of slash 28. Slash 28 means that we're going to borrow one, two, three, four bits. So I come down this column and I look for the first bit that is not, hasn't been allocated. These two bits have already been allocated to the wireless net. This is the first one. So now what I can do is I can uh, basically reserve it and everything to the right that it say this is this address space like this and I've reserved that for the office net. Right. Uh, I'll do a little bit of cleanup here. We don't need this guy, don't need this guy anymore, don't need this guy. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to figure out the uh, subnet address of the office net. So I come over here. This is the first bit we're borrowing. So I'm going to circle it. It's still a zero. This one is a zero. This one has changed to a one and now we're having another zero. So the address for the office net is going to be 0 times 128 is 0 plus 0 times 64 is 0 plus 1 times 32 is 32 so now we're up to 32 and 0 times 16 is 0 so the address for the office net is going to be 32. So I'll put this down here and this becomes dot 32. So the address would be 192.168.100.32 slash 28. That's how we would describe that one. We're going to come down to the next one is video net is slash 29. So let's go down and see what we got here. I'll just get rid of that and pop down here. Do a little bit of cleanup before we start here. Matt's gone, gone, gone. So now what I do is I look at slash 29 network and I come down to find the first bit that is not allocated. It's this one here. right? This, these bits, four bits here, are allocated to wireless net. These two bits are allocated to the office net. This bit here hasn't been used. So what I can do is I can um, I will highlight it and everything to the right and, and that's going to reserve it for the video net. So what I'm going to do is type right. Uh, we don't have much room there. So what I'll do is I'll type it here. Video net. So we got the video net. Make this a little bit pretty. Whoops. There we go. And now what I want to do is I want to find out the IP address for the video net uh, network ad subnet address. So I start here and I say, okay, zero, zero, one, one, and zero. Let's see if I make it bigger. Click. So we borrowed five bits. Here's the bits that we borrowed and their value. So again, we say, what is the uh, subnet address going to be? It's going to be 0 times 128 is 0, plus 0 times 64 is 0, plus 1 times 32 is 32, plus 1 times 16 is 16, 16 plus 32 is 40, plus 0 times 8. So the address for the video net is going to be 40. To be specific, it will be you know, that doesn't write. 16 plus 32 is not 40. 16 plus 32 is 48. I don't know where I got 40 from. Okay, so it's dot 48. And what it would really be is 192.168.100.48 slash 29. The last one, subnet we're going to create is a slash 30 for WAN1. So we're going to come down here. And we're going to look at the slash 30 column, and we're going to come down to 
uh, the very first bit that's not used, which is this guy here. So what I'll do is I'll grab another color, nice bright red, and I'm going to allocate it and everything to the right. There's nothing to the right right now, so I'm going to indicate what it's for. It's for WAN 1. So WAN 1 is going to reserve these IP addresses. Um, one of the things I'm going to do here is just do a little cleanup. Again, get rid of these guys, Sayonara, Hasta La Vista Baby, whatever. And now we want to know what the uh, IP, the subnet address is going to be. So we start here, this is 0, next one is 0, next one is 1, next one is 1, we have another 1 here, and we have a 0 there. Okay. So for slash 30, we use 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 bits. We borrow 6 bits from the host ones to create a slash 30 network. Uh, if I want to know what the subnet address is, I go 0 times 128 is 0, plus 0 times 64 is 0, plus 1 times 32 is 32, plus 1 times 16 is 16, plus 32 is 48, plus 1 times 8 is 8, 8 and 48 make 56. I'm kind of uh, second guessing my math now, right? So it should be dot 56. I have to get a calculator out. All right, so 26, that looks right to me. So the actual IP address would be 192.168.100.56 slash 30. So now we're really finished with this. Like the whole purpose of this is we actually can see our uh, networks being allocated in that. Uh, this one is all kind of nice and easy in that. It's a nice simple one so we can get it in about 20 minutes time for um, YouTube. Alright, so now we get to an even easier part. What we're going to do is we're going to determine the broadcast address. So what happens is that we've allocated uh, enough memory for 25 hosts, actually it's to go from z dot zero all the way to the next network dot 32. So what we'll find is that the broadcast address is one less than the next network. So we just go like this and we say we take 32 and what we do is we subtract 1 and that will give us the last address or the broadcast address for the wireless net. So it's going to be dot 31. So the broadcast address will be actually 192.168.100.31 for the wireless net. We do the same thing with the next one. For the office net, we look at the video net and say we've allocated from dot .32 all the way up to dot .48. So what we do is we take dot .38 uh, 48, and we subtract 1 again. So here I'm going to subtract 1 minus 1 and I end up with dot .47. Forty-seven. So one nine two dot one six eight dot one hundred dot forty-seven is the broadcast address for the office net. We do the same thing for the video net. We take fifty-six minus one gives us fifty-five. So fifty-five one nine two dot one six eight dot one hundred dot fifty-five is the broadcast address for the video net. WAN one is a little bit more difficult. So what we have to do is take a look at what's going on here. And it's difficult because we don't have a, uh, a fifth network here that we can just do the same type of math on. So what I'm going to do is take a look here and what happens. So for WAN 1, we've used all of these bits, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 bits to indicate the uh, network portion of our 8 bits. This gives us our network address of dot five six. Now we're left with two bits, bit zero and bit one. If we look at the weighting of these bits, bit zero has a weighting of one, bit one has a weighting of two. The definition of a broadcast address is that a broadcast address has all the host bits set to one. So that means that uh, bit zero will have a weighting of one, 
bit 1 will have a weighting of 2. When we add those together, we get 3. So we take our dot .56 from our subnet address, and we add 3 for bits 1 and bit 0, and we get dot .59. That becomes our broadcast address for WAN1. Right? So now we've got this. We've got all we have to do is figure out the host range. So what I'm going to do is clean this up a bit here, get rid of that. This goes bye-bye. This is uh, Salu. This is hostile of something. I don't know. So we look at the host range. Now the host range for our network is all the addresses between the network address and the broadcast address. So this means that the starting address is going to be one more than the network address, so that's dot one. Two, one less than the broadcast address, dot thirty. So everything in between. So for the wireless net, the host range is going to be dot one to dot thirty. This is the usable hosts that we can use. For the office net, it's going to be dot thirty-three to dot forty-six, which is everything in between the network address and the broadcast address. Over here, for the video net, it's going to be dot forty-nine to dot fifty-four, which is everything between the network address dot forty-eight and the broadcast address dot fifty-five. Uh, for WAN one, it's going to be dot fifty-seven to dot fifty-eight, which is everything in between. I kind of like to stop right now and take a look at this WAN one. WAN one uses a slash thirty pref prefix. Slash 30 prefix says that we're going to have four hosts and two usable hosts. So let's take a look at slash 30 here. We have one, two, three hosts and two usable hosts. So we find out that it's it's true, right? So now we have our network done. Now what we should do is what we should do is add those networks to our network topology drawing. So the wireless network is going to be 192. 168.100.0 slash 27. So I come over here and uh, get my tool out here. So the wireless network down here is going to be 192.168.100.0 slash 27. So I'm going to just double check it because I'm notorious for forgetting things. Slash 27 is correct. Office net is going to be dot 32 slash 28. So on my Network top topology on the office net, it's going to be 192.168.100.32/28. Uh, on the video net, we'll take a look here. Video net is .48/29. So I'll put here video net 192.168.100. And I forgot already. We'll go back 48/29. Okay. 48 slash 29. That would be this network. What we'd have is on our wide area network link, we'd have 192.168.100. And let's go over here and check it 56 slash 30. 56 slash 30. So now what we have is, is a, a network. It shows we've subnetted it. These are all the different uh, subnets we have, the different prefixes. And that. Now, here's the power of where this network map comes in for troubleshooting. So, as an example, I'm going to take a, a uh, I'm going to assign a PC. I'll assign this PC as 192.168.100.33 as an IP address on the wireless net. All of a sudden, it doesn't work. I'm going, why doesn't it work? You know, it's a dot zero network. It should work. Well, if I come here and I look and I say, where does dot 33 w exist? It's on the office net. It's not on the wireless net. We have it set up for the wrong network. So we can find things like that. So, uh, so that guy doesn't work. Uh, let's say over on the off office net, I assign an IP address as 192.168.100.33. And 47, right? And I assign the PC that it doesn't work. I'm wondering why doesn't it work? It's a dot 32, a dot 47. This one's dot 56. Uh, why shouldn't it work? 
Well, I can come over here and I can see that dot forty-seven is a broadcast address, so we can't use that address and it won't work, right? So over here, I assign this guy a good IP address one nine two dot one six eight dot one hundred dot what can I say here uh, forty-five, right? That's a good IP address. So I look at this and I say, hmm, and it doesn't work. So I come over here and say dot forty-five is the office net. It's not the video net. The video net has to be between dot forty-nine and dot fifty-four. So we so what we can do is we can troubleshoot the network on, on why computers don't work if they've been uh, uh, statically or manually applied uh, IP addresses and things like that. Because now we have a map, a network map that we can go to that is more descriptive of exactly what's going on. Uh, I'm Eugene Blanchard uh, from telecomworld101.com. Uh, I hope that this has helped you uh, with uh, networking. Uh, in the description on the YouTube video site uh, we'll have a link to where you can actually download uh, uh, these files and you can practice it on your own. Thank you very much.